This is the full review and comparison between Office 365 and G Suite for 2020. And we will give you all the details we have in one video. I will not make an introduction who's sitting here because you didn't Google for that. You Google for actually the comparison. And that's why we're here. So that's why we give you. It's not a sponsored video. It's from us. It's not a scripted video. It's just a conversation between experts. And that's why we start into here. So we made a comparison video I think the last three years between these two tools and the two worlds. And there was a lot of discussion about like what are the differences, what can you do, especially in the comments. And we implement cloud tools for the last ten years. For a very long time. Very long time. And uh, we thought like we give you everything we know in one video. So if you want to make a decision, watch it to the end. If there is a question left, comment below and we will answer it for sure. So this is for you guys. And we jump right into it. Why would you actually one of, would want to one of these tools? Like why do you want Microsoft or why do you want to go to the Google Cloud? Well, ideally because you wanna change the way people collaborate within a company and you wanna um, give them more, more freedom about um, where they work, which uh, device they're working on. So it's not like they, they need a VPN tunnel or something to log into the system or anything. So ideally that is your main reason why you would want to move to the cloud to have its, uh, its benefits, but could also be that um, your service is running out, your on-premise service is not, uh, not running for, for the next 10 years. So you're thinking about uh, making a switch because um, yeah, you have to. So this could be one or the other. Why do we compare these two big ones? It's also a question sometimes, like why are just Office 365 or G Suite? We saw Apple, we saw Amazon um, developing their own services um, right into that uh, kind of branch. But um, Google and Microsoft um, are in the market um, today the most professional ones so this is why we go with them yeah if you talk about core office tools so what people actually need so email calendar documents uh, chat video conferencing so the very foundation of how people communicate within a company but also externally yeah and also what we see a lot of times is that Companies have so many tools implemented for different services and different functions. And uh, basically you want to reduce this. So it's actually vital to have one core tool that actually includes many of the most things that you need in your daily work life. We have big examples like large corporations like Roche, like Verizon, PwC, um, Airbus running on G Suite. And Antonio, you mentioned already because they wanted to change the way they work. What are the big examples of corporations running Office 365 and making that move? Well, I think uh, for us, uh, one of the biggest uh, projects that we actually um, supported was uh, with Otto, who changed to Office 365 last year. And I think all of us were kind of involved in this project to um, actually implement a better way of working using Office 365 and the tools that come with it. What is the main question I should race if I make that decision? Like what should we start into? It's the first question that every time comes. It's how do you want to collaborate in future in your company? And it's after that, when we answer this question, how people want to collaborate, and it's really, really a wide range of, of answers to this question. Um, normally it comes to this bottleneck where we are choosing between those two core cloud tools. This is always, it's no matter how they uh, yeah, answer this question, it's, it's coming to those core tools and it's getting after that uh, to more tools which are bringing the benefit and shaping the way they collaborate together every day um, in those tools we, we are choosing. You have many dependencies of what you have to think about. You have the admin perspective, you have the user perspective, you have the future perspective, like how do you work right now, but also how do you want to work in the, in the future? And these factors all come in into the decision, do you go Office 365 or G Suite? What do you have right now? Are you running on classic office infrastructure so everyone is familiar with uh, Outlook and Word, Excel, PowerPoint and so on 
or do you, do you maybe run a, on a completely different uh, system? Do you have something in the background and then maybe use Apple Mail or something like that? So it's where you come from, what you have in your, uh, in your surroundings. So admin perspective, I think you can probably talk more about that. And um, for, for the user perspective, so what do you want in the future? How do you see it as a user? Like what are the key differences in these two worlds, if I look as a user on these tools? I think as a user, um, if you look at Microsoft, uh, you have everything in one package. So it's like one, um, one world where you find a lot of um, extra apps for a certain, um, a certain uh, function that you need. As in um, G Suite, it's more like a leaner tool, a leaner setup. You have like your email, you have um, a calendar and you can use um, video conferencing, for example. And if you need further features, you will have to add a certain app. So that's for me the main difference that I have um, everything in one world when I use Office 365 and I have to customize a little bit more if I use G Suite. Also another big difference is in Office 365, the admin can set up way, way, way fine and much more granular than on, on G Suite. This is one of the bigger key differences because the, you can always ask the admin, please do, please change this and this setting for me. And in G Suite, the, the, admin, the only thing the admin can then say is, well, I can show you how to do it, but you have to do it yourself. So it's more... But, but, it, but it changed uh, in, the, in the last two years uh, um, in, in a huge way, right? So if you have a look at G Suite um, 2017, and if you compare it to the um, version you have today, there are so many so-called enterprise features um, in addition now. Um, even they spread up the, 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 the plans um, where you can choose from um, which plan which user um, should use. Um, so it's higher the plan, the, the, the more function you have. Um, and if you compare, if we go into feature discussion, Exchange Online with the Google Mail service, um, which is included in G Suite, um, you basically can yeah, do this, the same thing mm. from my perspective, from an admin perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I would disagree. I would disagree. I would strongly disagree. Signatures. Yeah, you, 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 you will always find uh, some spots where you can do um, the same with the exchange online, but then I can uh, basically show you 10 things you can do with the G Suite, you can't do with Office 365. So I know the, the, the feature comparison, you won't have the 100% solution which fits basically everything, but if you discuss from an admin perspective, all the mail routing and all that stuff which you have to set up um, from a higher perspective to be sure that every email is delivered. So is on. there like do you have more work in the Microsoft world as an admin and less work work in the Google world? Definitely, definitely. Okay, so let's say you want to reduce your amount of admin work, you would go the Google way and not the Microsoft way, or is that too easy? If you do the setup, um, you can uh, book the Google account and you can basically plug and play start to enroll it to your users um, because um, more of the most default values in the admin console are set in a way that you can start working. In Office 365 <laughs> you have to configure a bit. Okay. Um, the philosophy behind that is that Microsoft says okay we don't want to um, bring the admin into a you know, certain direction. Um, we want to give him the options and he um, has to choose, so mm -hmm. it's a different um, I think that's why most, most startups are starting with G Suite, G Suite just because it's so easy and plug and play, whereas with, uh, with Microsoft you have a lot more, if you've ever seen the admin console, on the first look it maybe looks nice and new, but if you go one step in deeper, you're like, whoa, what, what is this? Like, I would close it down immediately, whereas 
within G Suite, I would feel comfortable because it has a nice user inf interface to also like add some add some things and you know do some do some changes. By now, probably not anymore, but since they since they add a lot of um, possibilities, but usually for for a startup, it's very easy to start with that if you don't have in-house knowledge, deep knowledge on how to set up an Office 365 account, I would definitely go with, uh, with the G Suite. Awesome. What if, um, sorry, what if um, you're not a startup? What if you're a company who has been around for ages mm. and you have your own server, Microsoft classic setup? What is more complicated to then switch to Office 365 or to... G Suite. From an admin perspective? Yeah, from an admin perspective. I would say stay with the Microsoft world because often the guys are certified and you know what you have to do in the exchange um, UX. So if you um, administrate your exchange on-prem, you switch over to exchange online, you see basically the same, the same uh, functions, the same buttons, everything is the same. You just have to configure um, in yeah. terms of setup. It's definitely more easy. I would but say. it's not impossible to move to G Suite. No, no. But it's also, you have a higher responsibility as an office admin, as when you're doing your job not right, um, you can make work for the end user much more complicated and harder. To, uh, yeah, no, that's what I want to ask. Let's switch to the user perspective. Like, the argument is often, okay, you have the same thing as you have with, with uh, Office Offline and can do the same thing. And I know, like, Katarina and Antonio, you both argument and say, like, if you want to change something, then you need to, like, change something. Yeah. That's one thing. Um, I would love the, uh, that you elaborate on that a little bit because I think that's a big step that is um, miscalculated sometimes in both ways. If you happen to work with Microsoft for, for the last uh, years and now you switch to Office 365, you don't really have to change much because there is still your Outlook, there is still your Excel, there is still your Word and you can do continue doing the work however you did it before. So it really takes a lot of effort and a lot of training to actually change ways of working them. Um, as compared to if you introduce G Suite, which is a whole new world, a whole new setup, people just need to start switching their minds to new ways of working. So if you want to really increase the effect of now we want to change something in this company and we want people to think a bit differently and to really re question their own behavior, I think it's absolutely necessary to then switch to, to a totally different system. But maybe Even as Microsoft is trying hard on this, that this change is also seen inside the suite when you see they, they quit Skype, going to Teams, um, they, they quit tasks in Outlook, going to to-do. Um, they try to improve this, actually, as I think they saw this problem. Well, mm -hmm. they, they, they say from themselves that they are the 90s IT and they have to reinvent it. I mean, that's a bold move for sure. And we've seen that over the last years. And I, I'd actually like to challenge that idea all the time because you can run Office 365 strictly in the cloud. You can, you can make it that, that the users will only be able to use the cloud apps. Because I have seen companies try to run G Suite like they run uh, with the local files and everything, they sync everything, they work offline with the Windows tools. There's also this possibility. And you can also run Office 365 completely in the cloud with no possibility to do local installs and also change the way of behavior. The question is that you should ask, how, how do I want my users to change? And much more, it's not such an easy answer. If, if you want a big, yeah, big, big, big change. I was saying from one of our clients, he, 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 um, he, he said, do you want an evolution or do you want to have a revolution? And I think um, maybe you can um, yeah, compare it to that. I would yeah, I think if I can just add that, I think you have to take one step back and actually see where both tools are coming from. You know, Microsoft has been around for a really long time. You just said it, it's the 90s IT, and they're evolving into, into a cloud world. So you have the two options. Yes, you have the cloud possibility, and you could maybe also say, okay, let's just only do that. But you still have 
uh, different possibilities where if you have the desktop applications or if you run in the in the online applications so you have I, I always say not limited options in the online tools but you have different options in the online tools you know they they differ at the moment where you use word on the desktop or word online whereas g suite on the other hand they never did anything but cloud mm -hmm. so you don't have the the option or the, the 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 possibility of going back to what you to what you know so what katarina said is basically that you have two roads where you can't really say, okay, this one is better or this one is better. They are just different. You either go the way that you say, okay, we keep with what we know and do the evolution and do a few steps on top and you have to really get into the change work and make people change on how they work because it's so easy to just stick with what you know. Whereas on the G Suite, it's you push them into really cold water if you do it right and do a complete switch and say, okay, Office is out. Let's say if you come from Office and now G Suite it is, then boy, that's a big change. Maybe we need to elaborate like in one sentence about like why we say it's a good idea to do that because otherwise you don't get the perspective. I would love to hear your opinion on that, Nicole, because you've seen both worlds, mm -hmm. like working in the classical office world and then switching. I mean, we run pure cloud. We don't know anything else because we wanted it that way. We do it in a very radical way, but I would like to be, you to be very critical on that and mm -hmm. share um, your perspective. I think that's a good question because um, you have to realize the tool is only the foundation for something you want to reach, um, for a vision, how you want to collaborate. So in the end, it doesn't really matter if you use uh, the one tool or the other, you have to decide how you want to work together. And it's a mindset change, it's a cultural change, um, and you really have to change your behavior. And so this is the foundation to give the people the tools to do that, but um, it's a long way from if you have decided which two to take, it's still a long way to go um, until you reach your goal. What's your experience like switching from, you've switched sides from a client mm -hmm. to our team, like seeing it in a radical way like here, um, how easy was it for you? Because we push really this new way of working, we believe in that and I think it's um, legitimate to be critical on that and saying like, is that the only way? But I would love to hear your opinion on that. Um, I really have to say um, it made my life so much easier. So it was um, very easy to make this change because I saw the immediate effect of, um, for example, how to organize my emails and have a an zero inbox. So I really, uh, it really made my life easier <laughs> to um, just change from this way of working to the new way of working. Um, I think for people who really worked in a certain setup for a long time, it might be hard to change um, in a radical way. I know where you're coming from to just say, okay, this is a radical cut, but um, sometimes uh, you are going to lose certain people along the way because it's just too hard to switch from, yeah, from one thing to another really quickly. That's like also an experience I can share because my professional career started with Lotus Notes. Um, and oh, I remember uh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. And um, I think I had three, it was about three weeks, this change from old way of work, to coming to the new way of work, changing all those tools, changing this behavior. It was like three weeks feeling a little bit confused. Is this, is this how it works? and seeing falling back to my old behavior sometimes but from now in my my actual point of view it seems like being it, it would be crazy coming back to the old way of work as it's so slow and ineffective and like um, work is getting done so much faster you're reaching your goals so much faster and You're, getting, you're, you're cultivating this culture through these tools if you're setting them up right. That's, that's what you can experience. So let's go into the key differences between um, the two worlds when we talk about features because um, I know feature discussion is bullshit, <laughs> but 
<laughs> there were so many feature comments on YouTube in the last video that we have to talk about features. And I want to like start off with one thing. We made one of the very first comparison videos between Slack and Microsoft Teams when it came up. And we said it was a smart move back then from Microsoft to come up with a tool like Teams, which was, I have to say it, like a copy of Slack. <laughs> it is. And what do you think? Like, is that one of the key features because Slack is not part of G Suite and Teams is much stronger than the Google solution? But I don't know, what are your opinions on that one? I think both solutions are, uh, you have uh, on, on G Suite, you have uh, Hangouts Chat and Hangouts Meet as the, as the two solutions. And Teams, wow, they've just put in so much work into that. They, you know, they saw what was happening with Slack and Microsoft just delivered super fast with a really great tool. And Teams, I think, especially with um, what Microsoft used to be like, you know, a lot of standalone solutions, it brings together a lot of tools that you need within your, your daily life and makes it easier for the user, which is not something Microsoft would you know, from an outside perspective, you would think Microsoft actually thinks about, but here they do. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a really good tool. But And it's also crazy how it uh, evolved over the past year. Like, I think they push the, the updates every 48 hours. You're the expert. Like, it's crazy how it's developed and mm -hmm. how, what kind of, like, really rich and powerful tool it became because it's so integrated with um, with a uh, planner, which is like a task management tool, or ways to open documents, edit the document without even leaving the interface. Um, so I don't have to switch into my Explorer, open, search for a file, open it, close it again, etc. So Microsoft, I think, oh, yeah, too, that uh, it did a tremendous job in including all these single steps into one interface mm -hmm. where you don't have to switch in between different apps. Yeah, <clears throat> but um, from my perspective, Teams was one of the game changers in that branch. Um, when they started to um, give it out for free. Um, I think it's about one year ago that they um, said, okay, Teams is uh, basically for free. If you invite external users which are don't belong to your company directly, you can um, invite, I don't know, um, your, your, your graphic agency and work with them together in a, in a certain project um, without paying for them. And this is one of the differences. And this is one of the points I want to bring in that discussion as well. Um, if we talk about G Suite or Office 365, we have so many different pricing plans with so many different feature setups. Um, we don't have to forget about that. Um, even if you talk about, okay, we want to go in, into the pure cloud setup, you said it before, Alexander. Um, yeah, if you buy the plan without the local um, office um, plan, y you have to go into the cloud. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, when uh, Office um, included the, the free version with Teams, I think this was one of the, mm -hmm. the major drivers um, even for them to open up for a client to, to work together with his um, environment. We have a dedicated Teams video that we link here um, because this will like blow up the discussion but one question I have right now because we say that Teams is important to bring in as a tool because transparent communication is forced mm -hmm. if you set up Teams but we still see clients who leave it out don't give it too much attention when they do the implementation what is the reason what are your experiences here? Maybe first of all, um, again from my perspective, um, if you have a look at Teams, you can see the evolution of Teams. And um, I know there is another video, but um, <clears throat> if you see all the integrations and if you see all the trends um, during the developments from Microsoft, um, which they, they try to implement, implement basically everything into Teams. The Office 365 groups, um, SharePoint Online is, is deeply integrated. Um, we see Skype for Business, which is basically blown up in, in Teams. Uh, they, I, I'm pretty sure that they will bring in more and more functional uh, solutions and, or ideas and options into Teams if you leave it um, beside. 
I think you 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 will definitely not um, get fifty percent of your return on invest. Um, But this still happens. Like we yeah. see that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it? Because they are afraid of having another tool for more communication, where they don't know w which way to communicate in Teams, in Skype chat, in Outlook mail, in wherever. And this is the answer you have to give. How do I want to use those tools? in comparison to how do we want to collaborate together and shaping those tools so they can give you the, the, the possibility to collaborate in this way. So to define and having an, an internal contract of how I want to use those tools is a, is a crucial thing you have, you need and taking away this, this fear that they are coming too much communication channels over you. Um, and this is where If you understand how teams work and how powerful teams is, as it provides you the, it's, a, it's the one tool where you can have the most communication channels in one place um, for the right uh, situation. But also because that is also the issue with teams because you have so many options and it's it's still Microsoft, so it has all the history. And it's really complicated, so you have to take along the people with like a lot of communication and you have to really think about it. How do you want to structure it? Not only from an admin perspective, you know, governance-wise, how do you want the, the teams to be uh, from a naming convention point and so on and so on, but also from a user perspective, as you just said. I mean, let's say in, in Teams, for example, you want to open a Word document Then you have three different options. You can do it within Teams, in Word Online, or in the desktop solution. And none of them are the same. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> Ideally, they work together, but sometimes you have a few functionalities here and a few functionalities there. So it's, it's still a lot. Whereas in, in G Suite, what's the great thing about G Suite is also with Hangouts Chat, there's Drive. And there you have Google Docs, and that's it, and it works. And it doesn't matter where you are, because everywhere it's the same, and you can collaborate in real time. Yeah. So what's the strongest feature in G Suite? We didn't say Teams is definitely one of the big ones in Office 365. Interconnectivity of all the apps. Because the apps were created for the cloud, they were created in the cloud, they were created at almost the same time with, with the same philosophy in mind and not just as a solution for problems and then it evolved because they were created with, I would say, a single well, mindset or goal, more a single goal to collaborate. And, and it works, it works seamlessly. You have one click from one app and you are in, in, in another app. You share, you, you, everything works together flawlessly. For me, it's also, it's basically very self-explanatory, like, You just click and you kind of know what is going to happen. Whereas, um, yeah, as, as Antonio mentioned, Teams, for instance, is it's a super powerful tool, but it needs a lot of training and mm -hmm. a lot of explanation to understand what you can actually do with it. Because what we see all the time when companies introduce Teams and without, without explanation, people open it. They see one button that says chat and they're like, I know chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna chat now. <laughs> But they miss the whole point of what Teams communication actually is and how to actually foster transparency, foster exchange of information. And for this, this tool is super, super strong, but you really need to know how to use it. So this is the advantage of G Suite where, you know, you just know how to use it. It's super easy. And also, as Nicole just explained, when she started here, you know, you need a few days to get used to it but then it's super easy and yeah, and even from a, sorry from a, a company perspective I, I mean uh, how many people are using um, gmail and the services um, private. In, uh, yeah private yeah. at home mm -hmm. um, I mean if you if you hire an, uh, a new employer um, so the, the, you have a 50 50 chance that he knows your tool you know what I yeah. mean um, even if he comes from a university or somewhere else um, This is what mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. an advantage. Yeah. But it's also well known for Microsoft um, tools. There's no difference. They, they know the Microsoft tools when they're coming from, from university. Sometimes the there's the argument But to say like the large corporations have to go the office way and small startups the G Suite way. But uh, as we mentioned before, this is not true if you want to make a change in working. 
But the one question that comes up and comes up again and again, like who is stronger in the mobile world and who is stronger in the offline world? Because especially if you have a corporate running, a lot of people are traveling. Sometimes they're still offline. In Germany, you sometimes are still offline. <laughs> Very offline. Really? Uh, sometimes. sometimes. So um, who's stronger in the offline world and who's stronger in the mobile world? Well, G Suite definitely is in the mobile world because it doesn't matter, like... I, I think I tested a Word document which was in Teams the other day. You actually have to download it if you want to open and edit it. So you would actually take it out of the cloud, then do your edits, and then put it back on. Whereas... Also Google. I mean, Google is a, works pretty well with Android, obviously. They're, they're coming from the same family. So if you are already an Android user, chances are that this is super convenient. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, like, from my perspective, I don't see many differences as a user with both. Um, the question is, what do you want to try to compare if yeah. you mean offline? I mean, um, as um, Alexander said, if you compare, uh, for example, Word online with the Google Doc, um, for me, there is not the big difference. Mm. Mm. Actually, there's one big difference. The, all the different apps, they inter, uh, interact much better in the Google world than in the Microsoft. Um, if you, for example, I don't know, click from, for example, from Teams, you have to open a Word file or from Outlook into something of just, just from different apps to different apps. They usually don't really open that well. They don't translate information. In Google, it just works flawlessly. It just works together. For example, if you have to create a two-step code or you need to log into Gmail, you open a, a document from, from your uh, inbox, something, the app automatically it just opens. You have it there. This is, this is much, much more convenient. It, it just works. Mobile, Microsoft mobile, what are the experiences of clients when we implemented? Most of the clients, large enterprises, um, try to buy iPhones. <laughs> so in the Which is surprising. Like ten yeah, years ago, ten years way. ago, we tried to sell them, like we take the Blackberries away and you get iPhones and they said, you're crazy, we need the keyboards to type and now they all want iPhones. Yeah, instead of maybe Android phones, even our G Suite clients, um, still iPhones. most of them buying, still buying iPhones. Um, And as well, the Microsoft clients, um, basically, you know, Microsoft Mobile um, is basically gone. So um, wasn't the best job, maybe, from mm -hmm. them. From my point of view, definitely um, the Google integration, in, especially on, on an Android phone, is much better. The authentication is better. You have to log in in your smartphone. Um, with the Google account and everything you tap on in the G Suite world, you're basically authenticated, you're just in. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you, if you do it with uh, Microsoft, <clears throat> do, you, do yourself a favor. If you have a rainy Sunday afternoon <laughs> and you're at home, try to authenticate uh, your smartphone, your private smartphone with your corporate account with multi-factor authentication. Um, it takes a lot of time. You don't get bored. You don't have a second device, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We, so the next topic I want to jump in with you is the integration with all the other stuff I do, the policies and security, and then implementation and migration before we go into like plans and pricing. So um, integration. What I mean by that is... What about I'm an agency and I have to like deliver PowerPoint presentation or keynote presentation uh, as a result? What if I'm a, I don't know, corporate business and we do a lot in Excel project planning? <laughs> Excel is not for project planning, <laughs> but that's a different story. Um, stuff like that. So what about integration of the world I'm around? What other questions I should bring up? The question is, what do you want to reach? Um, from my point of view, The most of our, or a lot of our clients um, basically have both. They do have um, Office 365 and G Suite, um, especially in the um, agency sector, um, because you know, you're an agency, you have clients, and 
client A wants to collaborate together in G Suite and client B wants to have a PPTX file um, with the latest uh, corporate identity design stuff um, and that's, yeah, you, you have to But then you like you have that. to implement both. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of work. Maybe, sometimes, it's, you, you have to do a decision for mail and for calendar for sure, but um, you, you have to give them OneDrive and Google Drive maybe mm -hmm. to share content with clients. Um, mm -hmm. And if a client wants to implement his, uh, you know, own font, um, because it's, um, in Germany we have a nice word, Hausschrift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have to work with that Hausschrift, the, 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 the special font which is created for the, for the client. Um, and you can do this only by using um, either the Apple products mm -hmm. like Numbers um, or Keynote or yeah, even PowerPoint and um, Word, not the online. Um, services. Yeah, I think it really depends on what do you want to focus on. Do you want to focus on how you collaborate within the company and that is your main focus, that you are super efficient and fast? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to focus on what, what your client wants? So is, is your client giving you, I need that PPTX with the special Hausschrift fund whatsoever? Then, uh, then you m might think about it differently. But also, um, I don't think you have to have both for everyone in your company. So actually, you can start, like if, if you have a client with Hausschrift and <laughs> wants a PPT, um, but you actually work with G Suite, so it's totally fine to, you know, create the presentation in the Google world, collaborate there. It's super fast, super easy. You have one piece of presentation, not several versions. Uh, when you're done with that, you can still download it. Deliver it as a nice product. And put it, open it with PPT again, put all the nice fonts inside, Which is then again changing the way you work because and you focus actually, on... Yes, and you just need basically one license at the end yeah. of the day for this. Yeah, And this is then like you use... I know we do a lot of Google presentations. People say it's not nice for presenting. I think we make quite nice presentations. But in the end, the best thing is that we have like one version. It's true. And work yeah. in that one version. Right, but um, what about like other apps you have around when we talk about integration? I mean, there are so many apps and so many companies, we sometimes call it not in the cloud if a client has nothing at all, and we call it sometimes lost in the cloud if there's too much. And if you say you go to Microsoft, you guys said like there are so many apps for everything, then you can stay completely in that world and is that fine and good and easy? Or you can do it and if you, if you see Teams, you have um, so many uh, third-party tools you can integrate like Asana for project management and uh, really, really much um, integrations but the question is do you need it uh, for 95% of the cases you already have a solution well, I think but it's, it's what Nicole said before it's what's your what's your mindset and what's the what's the behavior so especially especially with G Suite client because it's a lot of the times it's startups using it and startups tend to not think about how, how it actually works too much so they think like okay we need a tool for that and now we need a tool for that and now we need a tool for that so you have the complete chaos and the lost in the cloud so really it's about how you set it up and I think also why it works so well at Blackboard is because we have really strong communication guidelines saying okay this tool is for that this tool is for that and this tool is for that mm. so whereas in the in the Microsoft world let's let's say tasks for example you can do that in planner in projects in to do uh, I don't know if tasks still around but no that's Going to that, be to okay. do. So, but you have, but you can still do tasks in OneNote. So you have yeah. a lot yeah. of different options where you want to do it. So if you don't have a common understanding within the company, I think yeah. that's the core. Mm -hmm. Do you have a common understanding of how you actually use the tools? That's why you can't just throw it in and say, okay, we have G Suite now, or hey, we have Office 365 now. You actually have to. Think about, okay, and how do we want to use mm. that tool now? 
and this is where where the where end users have to answer the question what do I want to communicate and which channel I should use and this is what's changing this is this is more effort in the first moment in the earlier days you just open your outlook and writing an email on taking the telephone that's it so n not really a big question and this is this is changing this is where it where it falls back well, because people are, don't want to go into this effort and take this effort to answer those questions and making a um, yeah, this is decision on where to communicate. Yeah. And if you don't decide within the company of when to use what tool, people are just going to decide on their yeah. own. Mm -hmm. So someone is using Slack, someone else is maybe using Teams, and then, oh, we also have a few Google accounts flying around. <laughs> 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 oh, we had weird examples. <laughs> the chief of <laughs> IT getting contacted by Dropbox if, if she doesn't want to make a... Yeah. Corporate account. Corporate there account. are so many hundred <laughs> Dropbox <laughs> accounts. <laughs> True. <laughs> policies and security, stuff like that. Because we see trust also from the user perspective as a very important topic. I don't want to just hear the admin side, but also mm -hmm. the user side, because there are a lot of questions coming up. So I would love to hear mm -hmm. also from your perspective, um, what are user thoughts? Or Katarina or Antonia, whoever wants to speak for the user. <laughs> no, it's, it's a really important question because it's um, a topic that comes up very often with clients because they're hesitant. Um, okay, my data is up in the cloud. Um, who can get access to that? So it's really important to explain how secure the cloud actually is and um, why they can put all their documents up there and just um, be not afraid to use it because this is something that really blocks and keeps people from actually using the tools the way they're meant to be used. And um, if you're not take away the sphere right at the beginning, you're not gonna get the results that you're expecting from those tools. So. Yeah, I think we, we see a lot of non-existent knowledge or information or information shaped by media, um, where we, I guess, need to do a lot of work in explaining how does the cloud work? What does it mean in terms of security? especially compared to sending, for instance, files by email, um, what is happening there, what does it mean, and then also like how can you, or not only can, but should protect data and devices, what options do you have and how do you use them? Because people just don't know and usually it's, you know, so far they didn't have to take care of it and I think this is also the whole mind shift that is coming with new ways of working, that each and everyone is responsible a bit more for their job, for how they contribute, and this also means how to take care of data or um, sensitive information. And we have a lot of employees out there, they don't want to take this responsibility um, yeah. where it comes to yeah, empower them to, to take it because and give them the know-how if they want it, and uh, there are still some that never want it. Yeah. Um, but you have to, I mean, everyone's running around with a smartphone, so... You cannot say no, sorry. Yeah, but that's that, that's what we face. Um, actually, when we're coming in workshops, and they say, I don't want to take this responsibility. I don't know anything about yeah. it. And how do you so, change it? I mean, that's so important. But, yeah. How do you like? What do you it's do? about explaining how the world works because what we see is that lots of people then take away this information for, also for the private usage, mm -hmm. like uh, multi-factor authentication or using screen blinds, for instance, if you're traveling and you don't want your neighbor to read all your private emails <laughs> or. Yeah text messages to somebody who shouldn't, uh, you know, read them. So uh, I think people just need to understand and you need to explain it in a way that they under can understand it, you know, not too complicated. They don't need to need to know all the technical details, but that just to understand what is basically happening if you send a file per email versus there is a file stored on a cloud drive and you give access to somebody else. To yeah, you don't want a 50 pages long white paper on how Microsoft or Google does security. IT needs that and your your maybe security and governance department also needs to needs that to work out the contracts and I think that's also a very important um, differentiation that you have to make that you are paying for that service. So especially with Google, a lot of people have the private Gmail on their mind, which is completely different than what you have within a company because you actually pay for that service and which also means you have a contract uh, which covers not only the, the GDPR and all that stuff. I don't want to get into that, but 
you know, the, actually how you, um, how the data is, is being used, because it's not. I mean, that's an interesting point, what we also hear a lot of times when companies or company owners uh, tell us, well, you know, there is a free plan for all of these tools, why can't we use this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> add another hour for that. <laughs> so there is basically, um, as Antonia mentioned, um, you can uh, use um, Google Mail and all the stuff for free, and you could you can use um, the Outlook.com account for free. Um, you know, you pay with your behavior. I mean, you allow that companies that they yeah. can scan your behavior and then they can improve their services to their paying customers um, because the paying customers, G Suite customers, Office 365 customers, um, don't want to be screened. So you need the free users to improve the service quality for the paying users. This is the model behind um, and you have uh, certain contracts um, behind. Um, in terms of yeah, data protection um, and accessibility and you know if you have a support um, issue with that um, with that um, yeah, manufacturer support or I don't, I don't know you just have a different completely different contracts. There is a general opinion that that uh, with Microsoft you have better data protection and in Germany you go the Microsoft way because of GDPR um, I think it's Yes, for sure these days because we have large corporations in both worlds but what from an admin perspective give, give us the most important security and, and actually I want and uh, want to go back to the why why don't we use the free version um, you have no uptime guarantee you have no guarantee that it will function when free, you need it version, hmm? yeah and we did directly in the admin discussion this is definitely a point um, yeah <coughs> Apart from all the other good reasons. But <laughs> <laughs> well, what from admin perspective? Policies, data privacy, security. If you compare the pricing plans, uh, maybe we talk to that, about that later. Um, if you buy the G Suite Enterprise Solution, you have also the DLP um, section, the data loss protection, that you can prevent users from sharing documents or contents outside the company based on you know keywords, uh, rec expressions, um, so to say, so, um, patterns like social insurance numbers and all that stuff that you prevent them from sharing that um, or to sharing uh, contents to your um, yeah, to, to other companies in your um, home market. Um, you have the same features on Microsoft. Microsoft did a good move um, uh, in the in the last weeks, they uh, launched sensitivity labels. Um, you can import the old security groups from Azure um, Active Directory, so um, and import it in the securities in compliance center. You can define stages um, and uh, let's say uh, from public, intern, and confidential and super confidential. Um, and these labels will appear basically everywhere in Office 365, in SharePoint, in um, Outlook, um, even in the, um, in the um, online and desktop applications from Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You have a little button and you can choose one of the labels. And in the back end, from an admin perspective, you can, um, on the one hand, um, configure all the security um, things which have to be yeah, um, made sure for that labels like um, you want to have in the super confidential scene you want to have the encryption um, or stuff like that and from the compliance perspective you can define um, how long um, does um, we need an email to be hold um, like all the dictation holds um, because of the uh, yeah, especially in German, all the uh, finance um, rules uh, which we have out there um, just to be compliant. But you can, from the compliance side and from the security side, you can um, use the same labels. The user will only see one label and brings uh, with a click on that for a certain file or a certain mail um, a separate action with that. 
I missed that for Google. Google is more in a global perspective, but you can do basically everything you need from my perspective. I completely yeah. agree. <laughs> What about China? What about China? <laughs> for, for China, maybe maybe to, to close this with uh, from an end user perspective um, and, and policies, we, because yeah, you can can all those stuff doing those labels, and then you go to and you find Microsoft Delve, and you see oh there are some other uh, files out there from other people. What do they see from me? What do they see from uh, yeah? Do I take do, do I do I uh, set up a profile in Delve because this is where the Microsoft Graph is working and connecting the dots together um, in Delve, which provides you um, yeah uh, unplanned collaboration, um, which is also very important. And this is where end user are thinking okay what what is happening with this? If I can see this, I don't know how it works in in, in the back end. As you explained very very well, um, this is what we have to give the end user a short view on that, short glimpse about this idea to really feel, make them feel safe. Right, because this work, like, because Delph is a powerful tool for collaboration but you have the feeling that everyone sees everything which is not true. It's like mm -hmm. I see something else than we see and usually we only see the files we collaborate on anyways, mm -hmm. yeah. which makes it very powerful because then we can dive into that. The translation is really bad. Yeah, I think this is yeah. a, a, this is a special German topic, yeah. mostly because the translation is really really bad, but also because it, it's a tool that we don't necessarily are, are used to. Right, but we think it's a very powerful thing to use and not to leave it away, right? And yeah, for sure. So let's uh, do jump into the last big topic China? before we do. <laughs> 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 So that was definitely one question, like, what about China? Like, the Google tools are... Um, you can't use like them in China. I've been there, I mm -hmm. tried to use both, nothing happened. Um, <laughs> you, know, you need to use a, a, a VPN mm -hmm. uh, service. Um, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's allowed to use it as a foreigner um, or an expat, um, so uh, you don't have to go in, in, in jail for that. Um, yeah, Chinese people have to, so this is important. Um, you can use a commercial VPN client, like um, yeah, there are several out there, you can Google that. Um, and, or if you see it as a, as a company or a large corporation, um, you should uh, think about um, installing a, a, a yeah, virtual network. Um, but now we are in definitely deep infrastructure topics. But to be clear, I mean, um, if you want to collaborate in China with anyone, you use actually the WhatsApp clone, oh, yeah. Wixine, WeChat, and not anything else. Uh, so that's what you do in China. So let's uh, skip that discussion because I think the Chinese are ahead when it comes to collaboration speed of that. But we are not here yet. Implementation and migration, how long does it take to implement these tools and what trainings would you guys recommend? Whoa. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where do we okay. start? <laughs> Let's make the rest of the video tomorrow. <laughs> Let's start with deployment. Okay. Both are set up in five minutes, ready to go. Maybe 15 minutes if you want to send emails. And then you're good to go. Then you're good to go. Your cloud setup. <laughs> your cloud setup is ready. You can collaborate on documents. Okay, check. We do that one. <laughs> What's next? Yeah, if you if you try to migrate um, your emails, um, it's basically the same work for both tools. Maybe you need different tools to migrate to transport them from the old way, uh, the old system into the new system. But you have to, you know, migrate them. Um, best practice definitely um, by API because otherwise you you wait for years. Um, so, but the work is, yeah. It's the same. You have you have to map accounts to accounts. You need to know from what legacy system you are coming, and you need to make lists. Then you make need to make lists of lists and. Okay. Now and now works. the software behind it. <laughs> so. Nicole, Katharina, Antonia, <laughs> Andy, tell us the truth. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, if a company is ready to set up and go, um, normally, yeah, um, in Germany, <laughs> we often hear that you have to pick up the people where they are. Um, I think, no, tell the people where you want to go and that's more important to start with that, where we want to go and everyone can start from from different po point. That's definitely okay. But... Um, Yeah, explain the why, the added value, what's behind it, the bigger picture. Why are we doing this? What what's what are the, the values we are we are based on why we are doing this? And then going in and showing hacks in the first moment, how to improve their work life, to create these aha moments, these wow moments where they where you can pick them up and, and yeah, um emotional bringing bringing also emotions into this topic because it's not only the Yeah, we are rolling out an IT tool. That's it. No, I mean, can we say there's a you number? Can do that. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't, don't, people don't, definitely don't, do that. Don't do it. <laughs> we don't recommend to do that. So, can we give out a number? Thousand employees takes that amount of time, that amount of money, that amount of effort. Can we, do we have these numbers? It depends. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought we agreed on not using it. <laughs> maybe, maybe Katarina. Actually, can everyone share some needs training. Culture. Yeah, everybody needs training. Well, yeah, I think. No, we can't. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I think it really depends. Uh, you know, we we go into the companies and we check what's already there and mm. what what do we start with. Um, if we see that there is not even a common basis of understanding how to collaborate, how we communicate, who we are as a company. So everything relating culture, values, etc. we really first need to start there. And, and they don't see that sometimes because they think, oh, no. oh, we're just here for the emails. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do that, but I don't think that will make you yeah. very successful in the future. So basically that's where it can start, that we start with, okay, let's identify what is our... What is the vision of ourselves as the company? Where do we want to go? What's our contribution? Um, and what are like the guidelines we want to give our people in the company, how we work together, how we are? And so we start with uh, working on culture and values, etc. Uh, once we have this, we need to find ways to implement it because nothing is worse than painting the culture and the values on a sheet of paper and hanging it on the wall <laughs> and leave. So um, that's actually then when the, when the real work starts and um, there are different ways to implement culture in, in, in companies, but this is not the topic. But I think at one point then comes the tools. And that's when we see how do we set up these tools in this whole big picture How does it make sense to integrate a Teams or a Gmail, etc.? And how do we want to use this in the company for our purposes? And um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, I think important to add is that um, it's not a one-time training. You can't just say um, we're doing an onboarding training for the tools and we're done. The cultural process is a really long journey. And um, we were talking about Otto um, before. They're actually really committed to this cultural um, topic and they're really doing a lot and it's a constant input that you have to give into the company and you have to think about leadership, think about um, teaching the people how to use the tools and after a while you have to explain it one more time because they forgot already. So it's actually a constant process and it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. From my experience, just to teach the average guy the normal proficiency in the new tools, it's usually a two-hour training. And that's then you have that's the absolute bare minimum just to be able to use the tools. If you have no clue at all before that. No clue at all. And that's when you know the big picture mm. of, you know, it, mm. yeah, it's great if you know when to use what button and what happens afterwards, but you have to understand why you should use a transparent chat room, let's say a Teams channel rather than a one-on-one -on -one chat. So what you said, Andy, the, the why, the collaboration vision, what do you actually want to achieve by implementing that tool? I mean, of course, you could also say, okay, let's just move to the cloud and have a technical implementation that is The easy part, which is not easy, you, if you have a large corporation, that's a lot of work to prepare the, the whole technical migration and um, 
the implementation of, of guidelines, of security uh, settings and so on. So that is a big part. And then you have the whole other huge part if you actually want to change how people collaborate and how people work uh, within a company. Is there a number to say like one third is tech, two thirds is training or one quarter is tech? I don't know. Is there an average that we know? I think by now I would say that the, that the technical part is mostly done at some point. You still have, like, you know, sometimes you, you need to adjust something or you have new things that are coming in, whereas the, the change part culturally and uh, collaboration-wise, if you roll out the tool, that is your starting line. It's like This is where you actually... You've done a lot of work before mm -hmm. that. You probably piloted it and you, you've, um, um, you've collected use cases. You have best practices now and you, you say, okay, we're ready now for everyone to, to get that. And then you're starting. It's day one again. Yeah, and the technical work is basically done if you transport all the data from your old system into the new system. So And you definitely have to train your in-house IT to you know get to work with the new tool either if it's G Suite or Office 365 um, but um, then is the question what do you want to do with that do you want to just you know keep the current status or do you want to start maybe to develop um, especially the Office 365 um, accounts we see in large um, corporations they start, you know, to develop um, with Flow, which is a trigger-based, um, yeah, programmer framework, um, which you can use um, to, you know, if you put the email into a folder, then mm. a certain action should be. Um, you do the uh, next level stuff, basically. You do the next level stuff, and you can do a lot of next level stuff. Mm -hmm. So the question is here as well. Um, how much you want to customize the mm -hmm. tool you bought from Microsoft or from Google um, instead of yeah, just transport the data and keep the user safe. So. And also what I want to add on this is that um, unfortunately there's no one size fits all. So if you, like in our work, compare working with a design agency that deals with big image files, video files, something like mm -hmm. this, it's a totally different way of using this core cloud tool than if you are like maybe a, a, a state-owned company that has to deal with lots of regulation processes, etc. Then you probably use the tool in a whole different way. And this is why we usually start with a little pilot group to first find out how do you use it in your company, what does make sense, and to start to create guidelines before putting it on everyone mm. um, so you can first test and see a good way of working with uh, with such a core tool. And also to shape out some quick wins. We all, all in every project we see quick wins, we can improve the, the collaboration in, in the first weeks um, where you can feel the, the difference um, to in, in some points. And this, this is, yeah, you're, you're standing at the start line, but there is no finish line where you can cross. So work will never We have end. to say it's a good thing because it opens up a whole new world, as I learned from, from Flo. It's not a bad thing. So we're hitting the hour. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely a long review. Um, but um, I learned a lot, I have to say. Even I'm part of this company somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned a lot in this last hour. That was important. Um, so um, thank you guys for joining in and sharing all the details. Before we end up, I would say if there's one last thing you want to add, now is the chance to add that, but make it short. Each of you can like add one thing. Or if you want to make a wish to either Microsoft or Google, because sometimes companies <laughs> hear us. <laughs> Adobe heard us. <laughs> what about videos? Well, I, so. I, I, do the, I do the first thing. I think... Um, what you should not do when you're trying to decide is compare feature to feature. Mm -hmm. I think that's one main thing is think about what you want to achieve and how you want to collaborate, but don't look at, okay, what can 
office word do and what does teams do compared to hangouts chat because they just have completely different approaches next one i would say never underestimate the people factor it takes a lot of time to change ways of working so just implementing a tool is not the solution my wish uh, <laughs> <laughs> would be that uh, more admins um, uh, don't take um, any longer care about to keep the current status, to keep the performance up, to keep everything safe. Um, book a cloud service, let other professionals do the work, concentrate more um, on how you can support the project teams in your company, um, you know, try to figure out which new solution is on the market, support um, your, your boss um, who has to, you know, do strategic decisions, um, be more uh, architect in the mm -hmm. digital way um, and less, uh, you know, manager, which... Yeah. yeah. Handyman. Uh, uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> good. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good. Uh, picture. Um, yeah, actually, I want to underline what Katharina said. Um, I think there is no easy way to make a change. It always hurts a little bit. Um, the choice of the tool is the starting point, but you really have to be committed to reach your goal in the end. Yeah, and um, maybe um, don't see this change as a, as a static process to come to another status quo where it can stay for, for a long time. It's now it's constantly work on this and this can yeah really scale up and don't be a, um, yeah flat. Next status quo. It's it's not. It's much more than that. I actually have a whole list of feature requests. <laughs> <laughs> you can see on my Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> That's my list. Thank you for the question. We will link that. Yes. I will link that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We do another video. Access to the YouTube description. Okay, good. So my wish is um, my wish is that you share this video with as many people as you want because we shared everything we know here in one video, so we gave it all out. Um, I think you oh no, can. Oh no, there's much more. There's much more. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty sure you can make a decision based on that video. You learn a lot, so um, I really hope and wish that was helpful um, to you guys out there asking the question. And now um, I make the wish, please subscribe to our channel <laughs> <laughs> and watch another video of that one was too long. Thanks if you stayed up until the end. Thank you guys for staying out so late and the team behind the scenes as well. See you next week. Oh, then they you okay. Freaks! Okay. <laughs> Bis jetzt war's gut, aber jetzt. Bis jetzt war's ganz normal. Warte, ich mach den jetzt. Oh, ja. Der Fuß da drauf drücken. Drücken drauf. Super, hier auch rein. Tschüss.